Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the public release of the final publication of the National Academy of Medicine's Vital Direction for Health and Healthcare. I'm Victor Zhao, the president of the National Academy of Medicine, and I would say first, thank you for all being here. Because we know that we are seeing, as the Chinese saying, interesting times, you know, for uh, healthcare in our nation. And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about our work for the last 18 months about the directions of health and healthcare for this nation. You know, the Congress, as we all know, is in the midst of a heated debate concerning repeal and replacement of the Affordable Care Act. Speaking personally as a physician and a policy leader, I certainly believe strongly that whatever the health plan, whether it is the Affordable Care Act or the proposed American Health Care Act, we must ensure that every American has access to health care and nobody should be denied of coverage. And I firmly believe this is a view shared on all sides of the discussion currently in progress. But importantly, we should also ensure that care that we deliver improves the outcomes for everyone, is affordable, and works synergistically across sectors to improve health. Indeed, as important as discussions related to the best way to provide coverage, Americans are facing challenges in healthcare that go beyond coverage provision in ACA or the proposed AHCA. For coverage to have value, our healthcare system has to work towards attaining its full potential. So with all the polarized debate on insurance provisions, critical and necessary changes to healthcare risk being overlooked. Our nation is spending more than $10,000 per person on healthcare, and yet we are failing to achieve better health outcomes, ranking lower than most other developed countries in access, efficiency, and equity. Therefore, in the midst of all this debate, we can't afford to lose focus on the ultimate goal of achieving better health for all through an effective healthcare system, one that not only helps people prevent and treat their ailments, but also helps every American to reach their very best health and well-being. So it is in this context that we are releasing this paper today. And today's release, I think, could not be more timely. Certainly, the National Academy of Medicine, formerly known as the Institute of Medicine, want to cut through all the debates and noise around the repeal and draw upon expert advice for the most direct path of the for the country should take to achieve the goals of outstanding healthcare. 18 months ago, we in fact launched this initiative and, as and assemble a distinguished, impartial, bipartisan group of experts, steering committee members of 18 leading experts as you've shown this slide. And some of them are in fact with us today, but I would call out, for example, people here, Mark McClellan, Sheila Burke, the Honorable Tom Daschle, the Honorable Bill Frist, who's not here, excuse me, uh, and of course, Shrika Kamenyika, who's here, Ruth Parker, who's here, the Honorable Mike Levitt, and as you can see, the rest of the individuals. <coughs> also, what this group came to do is to say, collectively look at what do we need to address? What do we need to deliberate? and therefore drew on the insight of 150 nations leading prominent health policy experts, scientists and researchers to examine and how to address ongoing national challenges, such as high costs, disparities in health, the burden of chronic disease and disability, and to propose the most promising opportunities to improve health and healthcare in the United States. This initiative, Vital Directions for Health and Healthcare, seeks to achieve the creation of a healthcare system that ensures three primary goals for the United States. Better health and well-being, 
high-value healthcare and strong science and technology. Now, the initiative identified priority areas for the U.S. health policy and commissioned 19 expert papers on focus areas, which are shown in the next two slides, or three slides. As you can see, under the topic of health and well-being, there's a series of important issues, such as health throughout the life course, social determinants, aging population, chronic disease, mental health, substance abuse, and of course, health of communities. And each paper is written by five to six authors of experts expressing the policy aspects of where we need to go. In the issue of high value healthcare, benefits design, payment reform, companies and tools to shift payments from volume to value, complex care, precision medicine, transparency, democratization, and workforce for the 21st healthcare. And finally, in strong science and technology, information technology, interoperability, data acquisition, curation, learning health system, innovation, targeted research, and training the workforce for 21st century science. Now, all these papers were peer reviewed and they were posted on the NAM website on September 19th, 2016, and in parallel, JAMA. Journal of American Medical Association published a series of viewpoints on these papers, and I believe you may have access to some of the, uh, the uh, material at this meeting. Importantly, also on September 26, uh, we hosted a public forum called Vital Direction to discuss these papers publicly, and of course what we've been doing since September to now is the steering committee has put together the final synthesis publication that you're seeing today to highlight the main points and priorities period ahead. So put another way, if you're a policymaker, you'd be looking at, I'm interested in mental health, it's written, and go to those, those papers and say it's written in such a way which is in fact making recommendations of when you think about policy, these are areas you need to think about. So it's a great resource. And what this paper is to bring it all together to say as a beacon, where the nation needs to go in health and healthcare. It's a blueprint addressing those challenges that uh, goes well beyond insurance coverage, but also is, it has actionable insights and recommendations that can help transcend the political policy debate and restore, in my opinion, the needed focus on fundamental principles for advancing health, healthcare, and scientific progress. So the final paper has really eight cross-cutting policy directions, four action priorities, and four infrastructure needs. And they're shown in this slide. So for action priorities, you hear from my co-chair, Mark McClellan, pay for value, empower people, activate community, and connect care. They represent direct and strategic opportunities to advance a more efficient, equitable, and patient and community-focused health system. The four infrastructure needs measure what matters most, modernize skills, accelerate real-world evidence, advance science, represent fundamental elements for future progress. Over the next few months, we will engage in broad dissemination and outreach efforts of these publications. In fact, we already had very productive preliminary conversations with leadership in the executive and the legislative branches, and, and all of which, I would say, received this report extremely well, and we'll be stepping up those conversations in the coming weeks. I would say it is clear from findings of the initiative that already resonating with members of our national leadership and are making an impact. I hope you find today's discussion interesting and productive. We should all rally around these essential goals. We can truly make a difference for health and health care for all Americans. Thank you very much. So I'd like to take now a moment to introduce the panel who are all served on the steering committee, uh, and they are I already mentioned two other steering committee members, Ruth Parker and Shriki Menyeka, are here. Uh, Kumiyeka, 
But here, first of all, is my co-chair and my good friend, Mark McClellan. He's director of the Duke Margolis Center for Health Policy at Duke University, former administrator of the CMS, and also former commissioner of FDA. Next to him is uh, um, the Honorable Mike Levitt, who's the founder and chairman of Levitt Partners. In previous roles, he served as a cabinet of President George W. Bush, administrator of the EPA, and secretary of HHS as a three-time elected governor of Utah. Thank you, Mike. And Sheila Burke is the, uh, is the adjunct lecturer in public policy at Harvard Kennedy School. In her previous role, she was chief of staff to the former Senate Majority Leader Bob Doe, and Under Secretary and then Deputy Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. And finally, the Honorable Tom Daschle, founder and CEO of the Daschle Group, former U.S. Senator from South Dakota, former U.S. Senate Majority Leader. Senator Daschle is one of the longest serving Senate Democratic leaders in history, well-known expert, of course, in health policy. And let me ask you to welcome all of them with me. Uh, I would just simply tell you that the steering committee has been stellar in the amount of work they put in. You can imagine, you know, trying to get 19 papers with 150 people, trying to put this together, but it really couldn't be done without them. And I think the product will speak for itself. Uh, it's my honor to uh, turn it over to Mark McClellan, who will also make remarks and give you more details of the findings. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> 